Good evening and welcome to Just the News. I'm Faye D'Souza. This is a news bulletin where we put together information of everything important that's happened in the country over the last 24 hours without any opinion whatsoever. Let's get straight to it. India has reported 2,887 deaths and 1,34,000 new cases of COVID in the last 24 hours. The Health Ministry has said the daily positivity rate has dropped to 6.21%. And this number has been less than 10% now for 10 consecutive days. This is also the first time in a very long time that India has recorded uh, less than 3,000 deaths in one day. The weekly positivity rate has declined to 7.66%. These numbers are heartening. The Union Home Minister Amit Shah, while speaking at the virtual inauguration of nine oxygen plants in Ahmedabad, has said that India rose to challenges posed by the ongoing COVID pandemic. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the centre and state governments patiently fought the virus. Mr Shah said, and I quote, under normal circumstances, the country used to produce about 1,000 MT of oxygen. Within a month, the demand increased to 10,000 MT. It was a huge challenge to meet this tenfold increase of demand. But under the leadership of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the centre and state governments rose to the challenge and started our fight against this." End quote. The Delhi High Court pulled up the central government today and said that some people must be charged with manslaughter if they have been sitting on the underutilized infrastructure to manufacture vaccines. The court observed that there is a lot of scope and infrastructure available to manufacture vaccines and this untapped potential must be utilized. What answer will you give for the loss of lives because of the vaccine? The court asked the central government. There is an element of palpable disquiet around the country. Everybody wants the vaccine. You have to cut this process short and somehow make sure the vaccines are available, the division bench said. This comes after a company called Panacea Biotech appealed to the court for the release of money that was awarded to it back in 2019 by a tribunal in a case related to the manufacture of influenza vaccines. The company, which has now collaborated with the Russian Direct Investment Fund, told the court in its application that it would be deprived of the opportunity to manufacture the Sputnik V vaccine at the fastest pace if this money awarded to it is not released immediately. The central government had moved Delhi High Court against the tribunal's decision in favour of this company. In March last year, a single bench of the court dismissed the centre's challenge and now the matter is pending before the division bench. To this, the court observed, Tell them that this is not the time to be wary of investigations and audit reports. This is leading to deaths today. Actually, some people need to be charged with manslaughter for sitting on this untapped potential. End quote. According to data by the Uttarakhand Police, 2,382 policemen tested positive while they were on duty between April and May this year in the state. 93% of them had received both doses of the vaccination. 2,204 of them recovered completely, five died. And according to the Indian Express, two of those five policemen uh, died of comorbidities. The other three were not vaccinated. Within the families of those uh, policemen who tested positive, 751 people tested positive and 64 died. There were some policemen who died who, had deplo who were deployed on duty at the Kumbh Mela in Haridwar, but Uttarakhand Police Chief Spokesperson Nilesh Anand uh, Bharne has said that there is no link between their deaths and the religious gathering. In the first wave of the pandemic, 1,982 police personnel had tested positive and eight had died due to COVID. According to PTI, the Serum Institute of India has applied to the Drug Controller General of India seeking permission for a test license to manufacture Sputnik V, the COVID vaccine. This is the third vaccine approved for use in India. Uh, the Serum Institute currently manufactures Covishield. Russia's Sputnik V is currently being distributed in India by Hyderabad-based Dr. Letty's laboratories. A consignment of 30 lakh doses of Sputnik V arrived in Hyderabad on Tuesday. The drug controller of Delhi on Thursday informed the Delhi High Court that Gautam Gambhir's foundation is guilty under provisions of the Drugs and Cosmetics Act of unauthorized purchase and procurement 
of fabi flu and oxygen during the shortage that this uh, city felt uh, during the first second wave the court observed and i quote cases of procurement of medicine oxygen cylinders for personal use may not be a breach of provision if the procurement is for bona fide treatment of covid-19 such cases need not be pursued only violators whose conduct results in blocking or choking of the supply of medication need be investigated the court went on to say mr gautam gambhir has procured the drugs and the oxygen in public spirit and has spent a lot of money in procuring it but at what cost you did charity no doubt but you caused shortage and inconvenience maybe there is another way the court directed that action be taken against the foundation as well as the dealers who made these unauthorized sales the drug controller has been directed to place a status report detailing the action taken against them of all offenders within the next 6 weeks delhi deputy chief minister manish sisodia has said the delhi government will provide free ration to the needy from the 5th of june even if they do not have a ration card one school in every ward has been earmarked for free grain distribution according to government estimates around 20 lakh people who don't have ration cards in delhi will be eligible to receive 5 kgs of food grain free as part of these measures states have begun of course uh, to announce changes in lockdowns karnataka has extended its lockdown until the 14th of june essential stores will be allowed to function between 6 am and 10 am movement of people have been restricted except for emergencies as has been so far public transport is shut only construction manufacturing and agri sectors are allowed to function according to maharashtra cabinet minister vijay detivar the state will announce a five level unlocking plan the extent of the unlocking will vary from district to district and each district will be assigned a level based on the positivity rate the medical infrastructure in the districts among others There are 18 districts with less than 5% covid positivity rate including Thane which fall in level 1 Mumbai is level 2 from tomorrow 18 districts will begin complete unlocking the financial capital of Mumbai which is on level 2 will begin partially unlocking although the local train service will remain shut for now the list of districts falling under these level 5 levels will be reviewed every week for further changes the districts could move up or down based on their covid numbers we are of course waiting for official details on these announcements because so far we only have the sound bites that the minister has given the press maharashtra has reported 15169 cases on wednesday and 285 deaths in other news several states have now announced a cancellation of the class 12 board examinations this includes uttar pradesh rajasthan goa madhya pradesh gujarat maharashtra and uttarakhand others including karnataka and odisha have not announced their decisions yet this comes after cbse on tuesday announced that class 12 board examinations have been cancelled the central government has told the delhi high court that whatsapp is in indulging in anti user practices by obtaining its consent or by trickery or trick consent from its users for its updated privacy policy of 2021 the center requested the court to restrain whatsapp from pushing notifications to its users in an affidavit submitted to the court the central government said that whatsapp users who had not accepted the updated privacy policy are now being bombarded with notifications on a daily basis it argued that whatsapp's plan is to transfer its entire user base to the updated privacy policy before the personal data protection bill from the government becomes a law earlier the central government had claimed that the new updated via policy violates the information technology rules of 2021 and whatsapp should be restrained from implementing its new policy until the challenge uh, which is currently before the court is decided upon in bengal the tussle between the central government and the west bengal chief minister continues the west bengal chief minister has said that the chapter regarding the former chief secretary and the current advisor to the government alapan bandopadhyay is closed for her government and her government will extend full support to this former chief secretary now for those of you who don't know Mr. Padupathy was set to retire on the 31st of May but the state government asked the central government to give him an extension of 3 months that extension was granted however 
The central government then issued an order asking Vadhapadhyay to report to Delhi to the central government for service for those three months. Vadhapadhyay chose to retire instead and was then advi uh, appointed advisor to the Chief Minister of Bengal. Following this, the Union Home Ministry sent him a show cause notice under the Disaster Management Act for skipping a meeting with the Prime Minister when he visited Bengal. News now from the world of uh, business and economy. According to a report by the UN's International Labour Organization, the pandemic has created what it calls unparalleled global market crisis that will affect employment for many years. During 2020, it said the equivalent of 255 million full-time workers working for an entire year was lost in manpower hours. The reporter also said that recurring waves of the pandemic around the world is causing now more work hour losses. And in the first quarter of this year, which is 2021, almost half as much as what was lost last year was lost in one quarter alone. The organization also added that the crisis is far from over. As we reported yesterday, we are seeing, of course, shocking numbers of unemployment taking place in India as well, where CMIE has said that 22 million people in India have lost their jobs between April and May this year alone. Behul Choksi, one of the main accused in the 14,000 crore PNB scam, could be deported to India. Dominican Public Prosecution Service has told their High Court that the petition filed by Mehul Choksi's team is not maintainable and should not be heard. According to NDTV, India will now push for his early deportation. Mehul Choksi's team has argued that he was abducted and taken to Dominica and if the court accepts the argument, he should be sent back to Antigua and not to India because he is currently a citizen of Antigua. He was caught in Dominica and Antigua then said that they don't want him back and he should be deported to India instead. News now coming in from the world of sports. Over 10,000 volunteers at the Tokyo Olympics have quit because of fears of COVID infections while hosting the Games. There are a total of 80,000 volunteers, 10,000 have quit so far. On the other hand, the Tokyo Olympic president has ruled out further delay or cancellation of the Games and said, we cannot postpone again. Tokyo and other cities in the country are in a state of emergency as Japan is battling its fourth wave of COVID and only 3% of its population is vaccinated so far, according to Reuters. Meanwhile, in India, Prime Minister Modi took stock of India's preparation for the Olympics and directed officials to ensure that all athletes are vaccinated as soon as possible. A hundred Indian athletes have qualified for the Tokyo Olympics and 25 more athletes are expected to qualify in the near future. One piece of positive news before we leave you for today. Uh, following reports of abuse of women who accompany their relatives in ambulances, 9B Foundation in Pune has started a free COVID ambulance service for women by women drivers. The ambulance service known as 3Safe uh, is uh, basically going to be a service that is free which will be driven by women. Now, um, Amarpreet Singh, the founder director of 9B Foundation, has said that women uh, are already stressed taking their loved ones to the hospital all by themselves. Under the circumstances, she's likely, uh, she's unlikely to turn the ambulance towards the police station and report the case for abuse. This is to help them. Well, that brings us to the end of this bulletin tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have in-depth reports and interviews on that channel. And there's also more details of all of the stories that we read out to you in the description of our YouTube video. Stay safe and stay home. Thanks for watching.